My name is James Locksmith. I've been based in Dubai for 10 years and I'm now back in Australia in Sydney. And I'm very honored to be here today to talk about my experiences and to chat with Omar and Stacey to learn more about their experiences and what they've uh, seen in their uh, experience and uh, their work in in their parts of the world, particularly in Saudi and Australia as well. We'll start off with Stacey. Stacey, give us a bit of background of who you are and your agency and uh, introduce yourself. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Stacey Piggott. I run Daydream Nation PR based out of Australia. Uh, I've been doing PR for about 23 years and I work with all different sorts of artists from development acts, um, local development artists in Australia, all the way through to internationally touring artists. And I work on a lot of festivals as well. Um, green space festivals, multi-day camping festivals, and one day festivals as well. Thank you. Omar Basad. Omar Basad, I'm a Saudi DJ producer, coexist creative uh, founder. Uh, I'm one of the few guys that actually played in Tomorrowland and Creamfields, and uh, I have a record label that has a purpose from its name, Coexistence. I love everybody to coexist, and I did radio for 10 years, which is the number one Western show in Saudi. Excellent. Thank you. So um, we'll start off with um, Omar. You've, you've, um, you've been... You've, within the last 10 to 15 years, you've flown... Uh, you've been living in different parts of... The, uh, the region as well as Turkey and the UK. Uh, yeah, tell us, a, tell us a little bit about what, in terms of uh, with your career as well, because you also are a radio uh, presenter and you have a show, and tell us a little bit about your background in terms of uh, the, the landscape that you've experienced and what you've seen here in, in, in in Saudi, the changes and what you think we could be doing in, in, the, in the near future? I mean, you know, starting back since 2010, when I was in the UK, a lot has changed. The music scene has been always underground in Saudi. And one of the great things is it was always there. It's not like it suddenly started because I have a lot of conversations with people that are saying, well, everyone's suddenly starting to do music. No, it's been there. And for me, touring around the world and playing in Tomorrowland and Creamfields, it showed the dynamic, the energy that we have as a Saudi artist. It's so important that is conveying right now. That's why it's too out there. That's why everyone is so extremely talented here in Saudi. As radio, a lot has changed. The listening behavior of people, people starting to subscribe to music, people starting to pay for Spotify. And for me, seeing that trajectory and happening in Saudi is actually so honoring. When we, last week when we, we chatted, you were talking a bit about uh, distribution as well. Uh, where do you feel you've, uh, like, for, for, particularly for Saudis, uh, a way to use distribution to uh, obviously get more reach, but how to kind of combine distro and media and bringing it on from a, a DIY approach? How, you know, how can we you know, bring those two together and, and help uh, and bring, uh, for, for a local artist, what could they be doing? What, what's your take on that? Well, if you just put your music out there, it's not going to work. You need to distribute it, send it to everybody, send it to, to the radio, and it doesn't mean that's going to get placed. Like even everyone in Apple or in Al Rami, Travis Scott doesn't get placed all the time in each playlist. A lot of artists get discouraged to do that. So you need to do the legwork. You need to promote, you need to make people notice you. Because if they don't like your music right now, it doesn't mean your music is bad. It means it's not for them right now. They might like it two, day, two, two days or two months later. That's for instance, that uh, Nigerian artist, CK, after one year his song hits on TikTok. It took him one year to hit and it's a world sensation. And that dialogue is so important because I see a lot of artists they send me their songs. I don't place them on the radio. It doesn't mean that their song is bad. It's not perfect for my show 
and they get sad and discouraged and they go back into caving, which is wrong. You shouldn't do that. You should be working, sending the songs, make sure that it's the right, for the right show, for the right person, and you're sending it to the right person, and you need to actually distribute it very fairly everywhere. Yeah. Because, you know, I see a lot of great artists in Saudi, they just post online, they put a $5 ad, and they're out. It doesn't work that way. You need to do the legwork. Yeah. And, um, for, and I guess that's from a, from a radio perspective, for trying to get airplay. Um, so, what, do you, what would you suggest for a young Saudi artist uh, that wants to get radio play? How, how could they get the awareness of DJs and, and figuring out, navigating all right, where, how to get their music on the right radio show, how to do that? What, what's your take on that for someone here in, in Saudi? You need to study what show and what each show does. Some shows introduce local artists, some they have once a week segment, and you need to understand what works for your music. According to that, you send it to the radio. You are, you are one post away to be the next hit, either in TikTok or worldwide, but you will need a 10 year discipline to actually work your career out of it. So it's very important to actually study because I get Arabic music on my show. I don't play Arabic, it's a Western show. And people are like, why don't you play it? It's Saudi. You're like, no, my show is a Western show. I have Ed Sheeran on my show. I have Rita Ora on my show. So it's very important to understand who does what and keep on sending and never be discouraged. Mm. So basically know, know who you're, you're speaking to, know, know who their audience is and try to connect the dots. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, I guess, so, so that's from a, from a radio point of view. Uh, Stacey, you, you work with, um, you mentioned, you, 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 like you look after artists as well. And from an from a, from a EPK side of things, from let's look at a whole turnkey uh, situation and being in Australia, um, I guess the infrastructure in Oz has been established for, for a while now. And um, to shed light on things that could be done um, here in Saudi, um, walk through walk walk through that whole PR experience on how to kind of set, like if you were to communicate to an artist, um, how to kind of prepare themselves and try to get a PR team or an agency on board, how to kind of create their EPK and have that and have that ready have have the tools that they need to 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 make it, that relationship with a with the right agency what do you do with with your artists and helping that uh, dialogue with them i think from the very beginning development stage artists who uh, haven't released anything yet who are starting you know from grassroots I'll sit down and have a conversation about the importance of having a body of work before we even get to the point of bios or press photos or anything to send to anybody. Because if, say you do have a, a hit single that you've written and you work that one song and you send it to radio and radio picks it up or TikTok, you know, goes viral or you have that success, any opportunity that comes off the back of that for support tours, for anything else that's going to follow, you're not going to be able to make the most of if you don't actually have a body of work. So that's the first thing. My thing is if you haven't got 40 minutes of songs, then go back into the bedroom and keep creating before you worry about putting it out there. Um, and I think just further to what we're saying, what was said before, when it comes to budgets and engaging PR agencies, I think it's the more expensive campaigns or the more expensive publicists aren't necessarily going to give you a return at that level of what you need because a lot of the work they'll be doing will be that subsidiary PR of creating awareness with people, creating awareness with industry that's not actually going to translate directly into a feature story or radio airplay or your film clips. So. I think it's healthy if an artist has the time for them to do that for themselves. And I look at it instead of them 
you know, the, the thought of doing your own PR can be quite overwhelming. So I always use an onion analogy where you start with, you know, the, the very beginning of the onion and that being whoever is in your local town. So if you have a local radio station, if you have a local media outlet, um, contact those guys and start there. Then go to the next layer, which is the closest city and contact, you know, radio stations, um, I'm not quite sure about Saudi, but in Australia, we have a lot of, you know, online media, music media outlets that are, you know, uh, small, smaller blogs, um, online outlets that are purely about discovering new music. We have community radio networks, which all have shows that are dedicated to certain genres of music. And again, exactly what was said before about doing research and about looking who you're talking to everything is at your fingertips with the internet. So you can find every single contact for anyone that you need to be speaking to. And if you struggle with that, look at an artist who is similar to you, Google them and see where they're getting coverage and who is playing them, and then hit up those people. And uh, do, you, do you have some kind of template that you, like for someone that's like just starting out, creating their uh, APK, uh, that's uh, Electronic Press Kit for those who are familiar with the acronym. Um, do you, where, wherever they are in their career, do you have like a, like a template to sort of help them with the, the usual kind of things that they need to get themselves set up? Do you do, you do that or do you? Um, I don't really have a template, but I think it's, it's really just about having a really clear press photo um, in, and it depends on the artist you know like I've got artists who are established who can use black and white really arty looking photos and they'll get picked up everywhere I've got other artists who are new if they don't have a clear press photo it's going to impact the amount of press pickup they can get um, I sort of my thing is more about advising people of not, what not to do so never send attachments of huge like audio files when you're emailing somebody. Always have it as like a Dropbox link or a SoundCloud link or, yeah. you know, everything I think, you know, same with photos. Don't send huge photo files. Um, always have that set out in links of Dropbox or Sync or whatever kind of cloud sharing, um, you know, thing you're using. Um, having a press release that has what you're doing, when you're doing it and how you're doing it with your contact details on it. And then when you're pitching to media, you know, a lot of people will email media and ask them if it's okay, if they can contact them. So that's another, I mean, that's, do you know what I mean? Like that, that kind of stuff. Like when I send an email on behalf of a band, it'll be, it's very just, here's what they're doing. Here are the dates they're doing it. Here's what we want from you. We would like you to do a feature or a review, uh, you know, airplay, whatever we want. And then the time, if there's an interview, I'll put a date and a time with the artist. So all they have to do is come back and go, yes, we'll take it. Here's my phone number. Or yes, we want the tickets. Or thanks for this. That's it. And it, if it's an album review or a single review or an EP review, it'll be the link to music, the press release that'll have the dates, track listing, um, information about you and contact details and a link to cover art and a link to a promo photo okay. so that they don't have to ask. So it's all there and it might feel counterintuitive for a, you know, a young artist if they're doing that or a young manager if they're doing that for the first few times because it might feel presumptuous. But I'm telling you now, especially the media I deal with, if they get that, the easier you make it for them, the more likely you're going to get that coverage. Exactly. So, the, in short, it's to it's about keeping it sort of simple and concise, and yep. uh, and making it easy because these people are the media are are being bombarded every day with with uh, information, and you want to like try to cut through that as much as possible. Um, yeah. Yep. So my I, I didn't fully introduce myself before. My name's James Locksmith. I'm from I've been based in Dubai for the last ten years. Uh, my background also includes uh, doing pro promo for uh, for many record labels as well. Um, labels that include Stone's Throw, Inner Visions out from Berlin. Um, what else? Uh, 
there's a manage about 50 different labels um, and so I my my role was very what we were just discussing now was handling a lot of that kind of first touch point with media and getting uh, the details across to um, to to your, to the, the the media outlet and letting them know what's happening, whether it's an album release or a tour or an event. So what we're just saying is is trying to keep that as simple as possible and and uh, and making it easier. Now, with your experience, Omar, you've you've your your background with your record label. You you deal with you deal with PR agencies. Yes, according to the genre. Right. So according to the release, usually I hire a PR agency and they work through it. Okay. So with your experience in Saudi, what, what do you uh, recommend? Like we're saying that the artists to create their own thing first, if you're starting out, what, what, what have you experienced? Is the, the way to go about it in Saudi? What do you think is the best way is it again very similar in that in that respect to to kind of create their own EPK first? You don't have to go to a PR agency yeah. straight away. That's that's my point. I mean, back in the days, it was hard to contact a media person in Saudi. You know, it's hard to do all these releases for me. But right now, you have Spotify, you have SoundCloud, you have YouTube. Once you do that dialogue. It's, it's very different here. For me, like when I see anyone sending EPK from the region, it's, I find it really a bit weird because no one's used to it. Like I'm used to getting the EPK from Rita Ora or from any DJ else, but that dialogue is changing. People started to learn how to do that. It's very important for us to learn the basic steps that could get you that traction that you need. Right, so, so a press release is something kind of new in the region for the, no for the dj producers yeah. in that electronic dance music i never seen any electronic dance music send me a press release wow. in my whole year i always get press releases for artists amar diabs or anyone else I see. but not electronic dance music okay so on an independent music level you you haven't really experienced that no okay so yeah um let's circle back to um le la like using media to launch your career um, the next, I guess, from, from a, for someone who's starting out that doesn't have the resources and the budget to kind of do it, we're saying that you've got to learn how to kind of do it yourself. Where can people find information in the region if they wanted to learn how to write a press release, if they wanted to learn how to create that? Um, that EPK, like where can they learn that? I mean, it's a uh, internet era. Google okay. is everything. <laughs> how you go to YouTube, how to create an EPK yeah. that will resolve it. But you know, what's interesting about the Middle East, I think we have a lot of potential. I think there's a lot of things that we could learn and observe and do. And I think we just started, especially in Saudi, to actually go to export around the world. Now you've seen the Latin music actually growing and crossing over, and I truly believe the next hits are gonna be from the region here that crosses to US and make that Arabic sound a hit. Mm. Okay, so um, what do, you think, do you think there is now a gap for services like, like Stacy's? Definitely. That there should be more of this, that like where there are people that focus purely on uh, talent. And because I, from my experience in the region as well, we, there's, there's a huge gap, like with, in terms of PR and getting that kind of support, it's just corporate. There's no like straight up people that work in, that are just straight up music and arts PR. Like uh, in my experience, True. yeah. I never seen this in the region, music, PR, purely. I've never seen it. I think so Stacey would add a lot of value here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where I was getting at, like Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Stacey. I mean, it, yeah. it was like that when I started. Um, I sort of accidentally fell into music PR, you know, 22 or 23 years ago. 
And when I started um, in Australia, there was probably two other independent music publicists. Mm. Um, all other publicists worked either, you know, at labels or um, in for promoters. And there, there wasn't really an independent music scene either. So when I first started, uh, even though the band that I started working with was selling out, you know, I think 1,500 cap venues in Australia at that time, um, they had been doing their own PR, their own booking, um, their own distribution. So it was a very uh, big story to put out there because media couldn't really understand how a band could be selling out a venue at 1,500 ca capacity without a booking agent or a record label and be three albums in without a record label. So, I mean, Australia was sort of back at that point and even Australian bands going to other countries at that point was quite rare whereas now you know australian bands probably do better in europe and america than they do in australia a lot of them yeah so it's once you start once you start creating those pathways i think you know the the music world globally wants new sounds they want new things to to petition and get behind um and it's i think a lot of people probably have expectations of what they can and can't do, um, what they should and shouldn't do. And sometimes when you're in this really new phase, especially when it comes to musical exports into different countries, it's really exciting because the naivety around, you know, what you should and shouldn't do actually works in your benefit because you don't have any parameters up or boundaries, really. You just go for it. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. It's a really exciting, and PR is not, you know, I, I ended up writing a book a couple of years ago because I kept getting these same questions from young artists. And a lot of it came back to the fact that they there was no planning. So when I sit down with an artist of any level, especially for an album release, I do a goal setting session where we set, you know, 10 goals of things that they want to achieve that are, you know, more realistic things like different stations for radio airplay or different um, media outlets they'd really like to be featured in. We do five values to make sure that whatever we're doing is really aligned mm -hmm. with what, you know, they, they believe in. Um, and that makes the decision-making process of, you know, whether they're going to do certain media outlets or certain types of interviews really easy because we just keep bringing it back to, um, you know, align with the, the values and the goals and if it doesn't serve either of those things we don't do it um and then we do just a dream session where they put out five big dreams and that could be you know winning a grammy or like touring with the rolling stones or whatever whatever it is and it's sort of it sets those parameters of what needs to be achieved and i always say to people if you are going to work with a publicist or you are going to work with anyone that you're paying money to to remember that they will then be your employee and you need to be checking in on how they're going to be reporting to you and updating you and going about their job that you're paying them for. Because I think in the music industry, a lot of the times, especially when people are starting out, they get a little bit too scared to rock the boat with established industry people. And it's really important that artists remember that industry people are there to work for you and with you so you need to keep on top of that yeah. to get your outcomes basically yeah um so you you've uh you've described so you've you've described a lot there about like from because that for me it sounds more on a like getting a support from someone experienced in on how to kind of keep yourself in check and organized and having your ducks in order and having things ready yeah. to go for someone starting out here in the region and not knowing this sort of stuff, like learning even that, that basic of understanding your own core values and being aligned and making sure that your message, what who you are as an artist, who you are as a human being, you know, just having those kind of things in order, I mean, that helps with the decision process. What what could you what advice could you give a new artist to to because that could be something completely new for someone and mm -hmm. so yeah what would be some advice there to like to learn this sort of approach like you know starting out you're doing it by yourself and 
learning yeah. about who you are, <laughs> more or less. I think it's more it's more for me. I, I work with a lot of artists who are quite political, and I was finding that they are lyrically political, and the music is political, and the vibe is political. And then when it came to talking to media, they would really shy away from speaking about their lyrics and you know, I would come back to them and say, as long as you are educated and you're really well researched, if you're going to write about things, you need to be able to talk about what you're writing about. And if you're not confident to talk about that, then don't put it in lyrics yeah. at that point. Yeah. Because if you're really, if you really know, if you know, know what you stand for, and you know what you stand against and you know why you stand against as equally as deep as you know what you stand for, when you're questioned, you're kind of unflappable really and people can't pick holes in you or your messaging. So once someone decides on a certain, you know, pathway, I just think it's really important that they put a lot of time and thought, like more more time and thought into that than, you know, press photos or artwork or anything like that at that stage when you're you're very early um, on in your career so that you can be taken seriously. Because once you sort of mess that part up, it's really hard to step back. Sure. Thanks for that. I, I, I wanted to kind of like go back, and like take a couple of steps back in, in this sort of discussion about how to use how to use media and I think these kind of foundational things are paramount for an artist and and starting out so the the we've seen in um, the last couple of years in the region a rise of uh, media uh, independent media particularly in the region and that's quite significant um, particularly because of COVID we've seen a lot of independent radio um, we are now, um, we still like don't have certain platforms that are solely around music and I want, from, from, from an Aussie perspective over these last 20 years, you've seen, you've seen that grow. What do you think are ways to kind of, uh, expedite that? Like what are, what do you think could be super helpful to tell people here in the region that, could make a difference here um, because we that we're trying to see more we need more of it we need more platforms uh, that are to, to come up to specifically support the music scene and arts and culture you know um, I, I yeah I'm trying to kind of figure out like in yeah I think it's like the I think it's it all it all moves together right so when when things start opening up you'll have you know, people who really want to get into journalism, you'll have people who really want to be photographers, you'll have people who really want to be filmmakers, you'll have people who really want to start becoming radio announcers, television presenters. So what will happen is all of those people, and it'll probably be, you know, younger people coming through who will be studying the skill set. So whether they're at, you know, learning media at journalism school or if they're learning how to be photographers, those people will start working together. So the young music journalist is going to interview the young band who's going to be shot by the young photographer, who's going to be made a film clip by the young filmmaker. And once that ecosystem starts supporting each other, you'll start having those platforms get stronger and stronger and stronger because the young journalist who's starting out will end up being the editor of one of those bigger um mainstream media outlets and they will end up changing and introducing a whole music or culture platform. The young um, radio DJ will end up going into a more programming role and they will end up bringing in genre specific shows and music quotas for local music and they'll start seeing the value in that ecosystem where it all supports each other. So if media and radio support local artists, your local touring scene will start uh, you know, bubbling, then that supports a whole industry of um, roadies and soundies and, you know, um, engineers. It supports tourism. It supports, you know, venue growth and more outlets for music venues that then comes in. There's a whole kind of, you know, huge ecosystem that comes out of 
arts support and growth. And I think once, you know, countries and, you know, governments start looking at the economic value that comes with that ecosystem and the skill set and the export, um, economic export opportunity as well of having your, you know, artists and your artists work and your journalists and journalists going out onto the global platform, it, it just changes. But it's not something that can happen really quickly. I mean, I look at um, Triple J when I first started. Triple J is our youth network in Australia and it's huge and we're very lucky to have a radio network like that. Um, when I first started, uh, you know, they it was still very hard to get on um, the playlist there, but now they have genre-specific shows. So even if you don't get on the main playlist, you'll still get airplay and interviews and promo on that network because of the genre-specific shows. So it is an evolution. It just takes time, I think, and I think it all sort of happens... It'll be one of those things where, you know, as the music industry starts bubbling, as I said, there's going to be people who want to do photography, so they'll start going into band photography and live photography, and in a couple of years there's going to be a really strong pool of talent for photographers. There's going to be a really strong pool of talent for engineers, producers, artists. You'll start getting agents because these things that happen will need to be serviced. You'll start getting publicists. You know, there's so many independent publicists now in Australia because there's so many independent bands. So they're all touring and they all need PR. Yeah. Um, it just sort of grows organically off the back of of um, the need, I guess. Mm. And, and people seeing opportunities to make money and create jobs and create their own jobs. Yeah, yeah well, well, that's something that we're witnessing here. It's kind of like particularly that government support that you're talking about in Australia where we, we and there are uh, things that we can tap into, that that took time as well. That took time to yeah. get, get to that. And whereas you speed things up here, we're getting that kind of support here, uh, particularly in Saudi as well, where they're nurturing and trying to grow something here and now you've got all these creatives that are trying to catch up to that what you're talking about so it is i can i can see that happening um which is really interesting it's uh, a it, uh, the way i look at it it's almost like australia was say in the 90s you know um, yeah. and that's it's but but it's got certain infrastructure that we didn't have back then but it's it's here now and my experience over these last 10 years i've seen um a lot of uh artists and uh, well creatives everywhere many creatives all uh, and they are feel, they are forming alliances they are forming yeah and it it it, it is in, it is encouraging but i think that whole sense of thing is is still new here um what have you, yeah, Omar, you tell me, what have you seen in, in these last um, few years, particularly in Saudi, like on a more independent level? Because, uh, you know, you could, I could tell you right now, I'm sure you could pull out your phone and there's a bunch of photographers you, you could call. And uh, are you finding that there is that sense of community and that, that's growing on, on a more organic level as well now? like yep. Definitely. I mean, Saudi has been always about community, but it's never been out there. And I think, you know, there's a word I heard while I was in New York from uh, one of the record label a and I don't remember who. He's, he's like, act local. Be a global stage on a local presence. And you need to really have that presence. You need to be really professional. And we do have that sense of community. You know, I have a friend he was a photographer. Now he's one of the great rappers in, uh, in Dubai. And it, it is one of those things, you know, I call up people, we all support each other, and it depends how that support's gonna be. That's why when I go back to what I said before is, I have friends send me song, I don't play it on radio, they get sad. I can't, I can't do a favoritism for you, you get me? It's about the show. It's about the process. Yeah. So I, I think we're beginning to start seeing now um, over, over like it's starting to it's starting to form and slowly happening and i think for 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 a new up and coming artist it uh it's important to feel uh, not to be discouraged that there is opportunity out here to elevate your career through media you do your homework 
um, and learn about how to kind of do it DIY as possible before, before, I guess, getting that you don't necessarily need to throw big dollars and money out just yet. Bef you know, like you've got to put the cart before the horse, you know, so to speak. So I think that's Tra traction gets attraction. So yep. you need to be consistent and stop procrastinating sure. and just put it out there. Thank <laughs> you.